Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Easy Baked Beef Brisket. That's right, not only is this apple and onion smothered beef brisket delicious and easy, it's also very fast. Although when it comes to brisket, very fast is a relative term, and this still takes like four hours. But above and beyond cooking this in like half the usual amount of time. The great thing about this method is it actually produces a brisket that is tender and still moist. Right, there's a lot of things I'll wait eight to 10 hours for but dry beef is not one of them. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by seasoning up our brisket, which I'm gonna do very generously on both sides with a mixture of kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper, and a little cayenne. And by the way, the three pound piece of beef brisket you're looking at is actually only half of a whole brisket, with this half being the flatter, leaner side. And if you're buying brisket in your average supermarket, this is almost always the piece you're gonna get. But having said that, if you do use the other half, or even a whole brisket, this technique will still work nicely. And generally these things are sold fairly well trimmed, but just in case yours wasn't, you'll wanna trim it down so there's no more than about a quarter inch layer of fat. But anyway, like I said, we will season that very generously, at which point we could go ahead and start the recipe. But what I highly recommend is popping this in the fridge overnight to let those seasonings really sink in. And to aid in that effort, what I like to do is roll up a couple pieces of foil to create sort of a makeshift rack for the plate and what that'll do is raise that brisket up off the surface and allow some airflow underneath, as well as make a space for any moisture drawn out by the salt to drip down. So that is optional, but it only takes a second, and I think it does help. But either way, we'll go ahead and pop that in the fridge uncovered for about 8 to 12 hours. And then once that's set, we can move on to the only other thing we have to prep. And that would be our onion and apple mixture, which will eventually turn into our gravy. And we'll start that by sautéing some onions in butter over medium heat along with a nice big pinch of salt. And of course, if you are making this for Passover, using that butter would not be kosher. So if that matters, you can go with some vegetable oil, or better yet, some schmaltz, also known as chicken fat. But anyway, what we're gonna do is cook that stirring on medium heat until those onions soften up and turn translucent. And if you wanted, you could cook these until they were nicely browned and caramelized, but I'm not going to, because I'm adding apple juice to this, which is kind of sweet. So I'm gonna keep these a little bit on the savory side. And like I said, just cook them until they turn soft and translucent. Of course, having said that, you go ahead and do them as long as you want. I mean, you are after all the Leonard Cohen of how far these onions should be going. And your sauce will have a little deeper color if you go longer. But as I mentioned, cooking them just to this point, I think will pair better with the apple juice. And by the way, in the business, this is referred to as sweating the onions. And then what we'll do once we think these have cooked long enough is go ahead and toss in some sliced garlic as well as a little touch of freshly and finely chopped rosemary. And then we'll finish up with one cup of apple juice. And we'll go ahead and stir all that together, as well as raise our heat to high. Because before we use this, we want to reduce these liquids by about half. Oh, and please relax if you're not a great judge of what half of something is. Because if you didn't reduce this at all, it would still work. Or if you reduced all the liquid, it would still work. So just relax and let it boil for a couple minutes until you think maybe sort of half of the liquid is gone, at which point we will turn off the heat because that is now ready to use. And that's it, once our onion mixture is set, we can go ahead and pull our beef out of the fridge. And because our meat was salted and uncovered, it's gonna look a little darker and the surface will look kind of leathery. But don't worry, it's supposed to look like that. And then what we'll do to get this ready for the oven is transfer half of our apple onion mixture into a baking dish. And as you can see, I do like to place a sheet pan underneath which I think makes this easier to move around and will catch drips, not to mention possibly providing some heat diffusion. Although I'm not sure if that last one has any effect. But anyway, we'll go ahead and place our meat on top, fat side up, and then we'll transfer the rest of our mixture over the top. Oh, and if possible, try to choose a pan or baking dish that's just a little bigger than the brisket itself. Although anything oven safe will work. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and wrap that very tightly in foil at which point it is ready to transfer into the center of a 325 degree oven, but only for an hour and a half. All right, this fast method for cooking brisket requires two temperatures. So we're gonna start at 325, but after an hour and a half, we're gonna turn it down to 250. And we'll continue at 250 for about two hours and 15 minutes, or until our brisket looks like this. Well, not this, but like this. And if everything's gone according to plan, our beef should be fork tender which mine was. In fact, mine might have gone about 15 minutes longer than I needed, 
Which reminds me to tell you, it's probably not a bad idea to check yours after two hours at 250. But anyway, once our meat is tender, we'll go ahead and scrape those onions off the top into our cooking liquid. And we will carefully transfer that meat to a plate. And we'll use that foil we just pulled off to keep it warm. While we go ahead and finish our amazing apple onion gravy. And to do that, all we need to do is pour it into some kind of container. Because we are going to have a significant amount of rendered fat. And by pouring it into something like this, we can easily skim that off the top. At which point, if we want, it's ready to use in this form. Which is very delicious, and would not look bad at all. But if we want to quickly and easily turn this into a gravy, all we need to do is blend it for a few seconds. And by the way, if you fill yours to the top like I did, be sure to pulse it on and off for just like a second at a time. Because if you turn it on and leave it on, this is what's going to happen. So that was unfortunate. But these things will happen. And I simply cleaned it up and kept blending, as if nothing had even happened. And by simply blending those cooking liquids, we've produced quite a gorgeous sauce that tastes even better than it looks. And of course, you'll give it a taste for seasoning. But I bet it's very close. And that's it. Once our apple and onion gravy is ready, we can go ahead and slice our meat, which you always want to do across the grain, which for me are going this way. So I'll have to slice across that way. But I'm going to turn this around because I have my eye on this beautiful succulent looking end. And I will slice some off so I can go in for a taste. And even though we used a relatively short cooking time, this meat was beautifully tender. And more importantly, still very moist. Alright, if you really know what you're doing, those low and slow methods can work out and produce something similar to this. But it can be a little trickier. Plus, if it's about the same, why are we waiting six extra hours? That is a good question. Another good question is why am I eating this on a cutting board and not next to a mashed potato pancake and carrot salad with my meat being sauced with that amazing apple and onion gravy that we may want to garnish with some finely snipped chives. And yes, that is kind of a big pile of beef. But one taste, and you'll understand why I needed that much. And above and beyond the moist tender meat this method produces, that subtle earthy sweetness from our onion and apple mixture has really permeated that brisket and somehow makes things taste even beefier. And in case you're wondering, as delicious as that gravy is on the beef, it also worked amazingly well on my mashed potato pancake, which I'm pretty sure we have a video for. But if we don't, I will take care of that at some point. In fact, as great as the beef and sauce was, I have to admit to being sort of distracted by that pancake. Although to balance things, I was not at all distracted by the carrot salad. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling easy baked beef brisket even though it's technically braised. But that aside, this method is much faster and produces results just as good, if not better, than the classic low and slow method. Plus, once we're done cooking, we're able to produce one of the easiest and most delicious gravies ever. So whether you plan on leaving out the butter and making this for Passover, or maybe you plan on making this for that friend of yours who's very proud of their beef brisket, which takes like 12 hours, and you've never had the heart to tell them it's a little bit dry, or you're just in the mood for moist, tender beef brisket, but don't want to spend all day waiting for it to cook. Either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.